This is a decade. This is at least a decade of people's lives, uh, and it's their passion. It's either going to fail or work in that very next second. That's what IT is all about. It's about enabling those things. It's about the excitement of what we do, not necessarily the process and all that. And I'm, that's what I'm going to talk about. When you do something like this, you have to anticipate all the risks, and in fact, other things happen that you didn't expect. So you have to be agile and be able to react. But there's a way of getting there. Uh, it isn't the big waterfall approach. It is agile, it is prototyping, and that's what I want to talk about today. Well, we look at IT decades, and we plan them, we predict them, and we've been doing this for four IT decades now. And what we see is that it applies to any enterprise of about 1,000 people and above, because it's the generation gap. It's uh, when you're that big, you start getting processes and procedures that are hard to change. So I'll take you through our approach, but we look at disruptors. Is a disruptor a bad word? No. It can be. If you didn't anticipate it, then you got it disrupted. It's really bad. But if you anticipated it and you could prepare for it, then it's a really good thing because you can take advantage of OPM, other people's money. You can innovate with industry because if you predict correctly, they will be excited about it and you can get the benefit of their excitement in your own organization, including the people who work in your own organization. Actually, I did some analytics. Have you ever looked at how many emails you receive and send? Uh, I get 400 a day, I read 300 of them, and I send 100. At the same time, I'm triple booked in meetings every single day. So what does that mean? Am I Superman? No, I'm not paying attention to anything. And that's a problem. <laughs> so the killer app that was email is going to be supplanted by the killer app that is not email. It's un-email. Uh, JPL was partnering with uh, Microsoft to create so that you can walk on Mars. You can actually, uh, and if you search on YouTube for JPL and HoloLens, you'll see some amazing things. Uh, that's going to be uh, active in July at JPL. So the, all of a sudden, you can walk on Mars by just being at your desk. It's a very different experience, and it, it's fabulous. And this is just accelerating. If we had done our normal way and built it ourselves, uh, we'd still be maintaining those, and it'd be 10 years old, and nobody would want it. This is uh, the joint, essentially the wrist, so when the robot falls down, it doesn't break, and it's printed in one setting. So it's different materials being able to be created, and that's really the power for us. Uh, it's just, if you can get it in people's hands, they can innovate. Scanning, 3D scanning is another huge disruptor. And uh, you can scan anything, including people, so very narcissistically, this is me. <laughs> but come and look at it and take a look. If you can scan that, you can scan a part and fax it to the space station and repair pieces. We are going to optical calm to space. Optical calm, we're going from drinking from a straw data to from a fire hose. Lots and lots and lots of data. So big data is real for us. We love the hype around big data because it means people are investing money in solutions. So we think that these are the key pieces. It, there's two pieces to it. There's human behavior. Human behavior changes a lot slower than technology. Technology is fast, but will people adopt it? So this is what we think will happen in the human behavior side. Uh, IT commercialization is taking advantage of all of these things coming out of Silicon Valley's in every country. Uh, Internet of Things, uh, rapid prototyping, and much faster work cycles. Uh, in fact, the uh, startups are going to continuous release all the time. Uh, no build it, test it, deploy it. It's all the time. And can we do that in the enterprise?